praise offering. Hallelujah. God is good, isn't he? Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Come on, let's pray. Father, we bless you and we give you the glory. We thank you now for Jesus Christ, our Savior. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. We give you praise for all that you are and all that you shall be and who you shall make us to be in Jesus name. So Father God, we we yield to the Holy Spirit right now in Jesus name. Come on and give God a clap offering. <laughs> Amen. You may be seated. I want to uh apologize uh we uh omitted our uh evangelist elect elects uh on sunday and i i do have permission from apostle that the apostle elects and the elders and myself will uh commit you commission you into your office uh we'll let you know one Sunday when Apostle Elect Johnson is going to be here in the evening. Okay? So we'll, we'll get back to you for that date. Amen? Amen. I, we do apologize. Just got a lot of stuff. Amen. We're on the Holy Spirit lesson number three. Amen. My question is, does God expect man to keep his word? as man expects God to keep his word. <laughs> Amen. We must uh, uh, look at and consider the Holy Spirit that he is aiding us in our daily living, in our thinking. He is helping to expand our thought life so that we may become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so uh, in Romans 12, 1 and 2, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. The NIV says that this is your spiritual act of worship. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. And if you look at Romans 6, verse 17, um, verse 6 through 17 in, in IV, we're not going to look at in, in uh, totality. I just want to pull from one, one verse. Uh, does someone have the NIV? Okay, if you could read Romans 8 and 6. Yes. Oh, they gave you the wrong handout. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. It isn't my fault. It, oh, it, it isn't my fault. <laughs> no, Kiko's messed me up today. And so I call myself pulling the um, copy down, I thought. Well, trust me, I'll have it next week. Amen. And uh, I reported them too. Uh, Romans 8, 6 through 17, but we're looking at verse 6. Verse 6. Verse 6 is, the mind of sinful man mm -hmm. is death, mm -hmm. but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. Amen. Okay, the self, we're talking about the self. We're talking about transforming, renewing our mind. And the NIV puts it that the Holy Spirit has to uh, or, or uh, should be able to control our minds. 
Well, that might be kind of controversial. Amen. <laughs> and um, because we're talking about the self, the mind, our life, we're talking about our disposition being controlled by the Holy Spirit. And But the Bible continues and says, but the mind that's set on the Holy Spirit it is to be spiritually minded. When you mind the Holy Spirit, when you're cognizant of the Holy Spirit, when you're depending on the Holy Spirit, when you're submitting, you know, we, we might submit it in prayer, but we're submitting it via the Holy Spirit to God. Amen. And so what it means is the Holy Spirit, uh, the words, the Holy Spirit controlling our mind is phronema, uh, which means to be possessed by the Spirit or to be dominated by the Holy Spirit. The meaning is that the man who walks after the Spirit minds the Spirit the things of the Spirit day to day, meaning every day you look into the Holy Spirit to help you, to guide you. Come on. How many people know he'll keep you? Yes. Amen. You'll want to do something, and the Holy Spirit will just keep you. You'll want to say something, and the Holy Spirit will say, just be still. Amen. It's the having the ability to hear in your inner ear, come on somebody, at the same time that you're listening in your outward ear. Oh, say that, that, oh yeah, that ain't in my notes. Oh yeah, come on somebody. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So what, what, what is, what, what am, what I am saying is that the Holy Spirit who uh, dwells in us, he draws our mind uh, to focus upon spiritual things. Amen. And, and he helps us because we're focusing on spiritual things. We're cognizant that we're saved. Every day, you're being cognizant that you're saved and that, 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 that God is governing your spirit. Amen. So the spirit of God is living within us and he is within us to work both to will and to do God's pleasure. Amen. He's here and he's in our minds so that he can keep our thoughts or keep us focused so that we can move forward in the things of God. Amen. And how does he accomplish this? He accomplishes it through the word of God. It cannot be done without reading your Bible. It cannot be done without studying. It cannot be done without spending time with him. Amen. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. The Holy Spirit has a voice. Amen. And another they will not follow because how do I know he has a voice? Because he tells the disciples, he said, and the Holy Spirit will remind you. That means somebody talking to you. Come on, somebody. So the Holy Spirit will talk to you in your spirit. Amen. I was talking to uh, one of the guests uh, that was very sick. And uh, he said that... Um, he was, um, they didn't know what was wrong with him. Uh, he got through, saved through the event. But he said he knew he was dead. He could literally see his body. But he, could al he also knew that he was toward heaven because he saw the light and he can hear God talking to him. He said there wasn't any verbal uh, communication, but he could, he was speaking to God and God was speaking to him. Come on somebody. Amen. And, um, and, uh, he asked God to come back. He said, let me go back and I will live for you. Come on somebody. Amen. And that's why his anointing is so different. Come on, 
because he has a relationship with God and he knows his voice. Come on, somebody. Amen. And so in John 6, 63, it says, it is the spirit that quickeneth the flesh profiteth nothing. Amen. Jesus tells the disciple, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. Come on. So every day, the Holy Spirit is causing you to have life. Say that's good right there. Amen. And uh, if we look at Psalms 25, uh, verse 4, 5, 8, 9, 12, and 14. We're going to find uh, what does it take so, for me and the Holy Spirit to have fellowship? What does it take for the Holy Spirit and I to uh, commune together? What does it take uh, for me to uh, understand the things of God, the Spirit in the Spirit realm? How do I get there? How do I make contact with the spirit realm and not, and not, and bypass Satan's kingdom? The psalm tells us. What does it say? Psalm 25. Anybody? Psalm 25, verse 4. I'm, I picked over this psalm. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Mm -hmm. Lead me in thy truth. Okay. L listen. David knew that he needed God to show him what man could not show him. Uh, is that good? Because you have to know God for yourself. You cannot uh, just depend on man to help you to know God. Amen. What man does is influence what you know by bringing, bringing confirmation that you are hearing from God. Uh, uh, you know, sometimes when you uh, have been studying and the preacher begins to preach and, and they come from some place, you say, oh, God told me that. Anybody ever say, oh, God told me that? Well, then he's talking to you. Amen. So he's confirming that you're hearing him. Oh, y'all won't help me. And, and then that, that makes you want to go deeper. Uh, again, because see, if you can show me this, come on, what else am I missing? Hallelujah. Ooh, the, come on, Sharon, calm down. I said, I'm going to calm down. So he says, Lord, show me your ways. Teach me the, thy paths. Lead me in thy what? Truth. And teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation, and on, do, on thee do I wait all the day. Oh, this is good. Amen. Let's look at eight. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he will teach sinners the way. Uh, this is it. Uh, you just need to put a circle around nine because this is the key to getting in God. This is the key. Say, this is the key. Amen. Don't think you all that because you can quote scripture. Don't think you all that. Come on, somebody. Amen. Because you look like God put you with somebody that you know more than they do. Because the devil got a way of making our heads so big that we don't be no spiritually good. <laughs> Amen. And, and so uh, uh, here the psalmist say, the meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach the way. Uh-huh. Verse 12. 
What man is he that feareth the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he shall choose. Who chooses the way? I choose the way. I choose the way. Every day we choose which way we gonna go. We choose to sin or not to sin. It's a choice. Every day you gotta make a choice. Do I do right or do I do wrong? Do I align myself with the scripture or do I take what comes to my mind? Uh-huh, amen. So what is he saying? How we get truth, how we're learning, how God begins to speak about his way to us is when our spirit is meek. That word meek there means when it's quiet, when it's a spirit of humility and sincerity and a patient spirit. You can't hurry God. Say you can't hurry God. Amen. So you might as well do something else while you wait. Pray. Come on, confess, have faith, amen. So here he says, what, what does this do? The writer says, it opens our heart and our mind so that we can receive from God. The spirit of meekness opens our what? And what? Mind. And then he says, and secondly, through the fear of the Lord or through the reverence of who Yahweh is, through the reverence of who Elohim is, through the reverence of who the Lord is. Amen. And then Hebrews 12 and 28 in the New American Standard Bible says, therefore, since we have received a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude by which we may offer to God acceptable servants with reverence. Uh, uh, the New Living Translation say, or holy fear. Uh-huh. And ah, uh, oh my God, oh my God. I, oh God, I just can't believe you showed me that. I can't believe you helped me out of that. I can't believe you healed me. I can't believe you delivered. Oh my God, what a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore his own. Hallelujah. Holy fear means that I take with caution. I walk carefully with discretion and circumspectly. Amen. David said, let integrity and uprightness preserve me. Amen. Not being double-minded, not being two-faced. Come on, somebody. Amen. Trying to get yourself together, trying to align yourself up with the scripture. Come on. When the Holy Spirit shows you a mirror of yourself and reveal this how you look to me. This how you look to me when you gossip. This how you look to me when you backbite. This how you look when you're envious. This how you look when you're jealous. Come on, amen. He opens up the heart, which is the mirror. I say the heart is the mirror. Amen. Because God looks on the heart. And the reflection of the heart is what we walk out every day. So I wanted to explain uh, a mind controlled by the Holy Spirit. That it does not mean that the Holy Spirit dictates in your life. What it means is that God or the Holy Spirit will never violate or take away your will, neither your personality. He won't do it. He won't do it. Jesus told the disciples that the Holy Spirit is a helper. This is his job description. Jesus gives his job description. He, he, he gives him his perimeter whereby he works with man. He works with man as a comforter, 
a helper, a guide, and a teacher. Amen. Now, if you need assistance, you go to the helper. Uh-huh. If you need comfort, you, uh, you, you, he will comfort you. If you need him to show you the way, he'll guide you. If you become a student, he'll teach you. Oh, that's good right there, Shrank. That ain't in my notes either. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Amen. One thing he will never do is usurp your authority over your will and over your personality. Amen. Why? Obedience is a choice. To do or not to do is a personal decision. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we can look at uh, Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14, and we see that uh, God says, if you do this, this will happen to you. And, uh, oh, I wanted to really show you Deuteronomy 30, because we just quote verse 19, but I really want to show you where it's coming from. Thirty, uh, verse 15 see I have set before thee this day life and good death and evil verse 16 in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments that thou mayest live and and, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee in the land whether thou goest to possess it. But if thine heart turn away so that thou wilt not hear, if your heart turns away, thou, you cannot hear. The heart has to face God. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, somebody. Amen. It has to stay open. He don't want to see the back of the heart. Oh. Hallelujah. He looks right in the face of the heart. Hallelujah. Say, this is good. Amen. He said, but shall be drawn away and worship other gods and serve them. He said, I denounce unto you this day that ye shall surely perish and that ye shall not prolong your days upon the land, whether thou pass it over the Jordan to go to possess it. I call heaven and earth to record. Uh, uh, this day against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, therefore choose what? Amen. Amen. That both thou and thy seed may live. What's life? That thou mayest love the Lord thy God and that thou mayest obey his voice. Woo! And that thou mayest cleave unto him for he is thy life and the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob to give them. Come on, somebody. Amen. Now, uh, 2 Corinthians 3.17 said, Now where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. We are not bound to God. We bind ourselves to God. We cleave to God. We hold on to God. Come on, somebody. Amen. I don't care how the world try to loose your grip. You got to cleave to him. That means don't. That, uh, amen. That's why the wife shall cleave. They shall, the husband and wife shall cleave. I don't care what's going on. Cleave. I don't care. Hold on. Because this kind of love is precious. Hallelujah. I like what Derek Prince said. You know, he's one of my favorites. 
in his explanation of the Holy Spirit, he writes um, that the extent to which the Holy Spirit will control and direct the believer is the extent to which the believer will voluntarily yield to the Holy Spirit and accept his control and direction. Amen. I mean, he's not going to make you. And he's not going to tell you anything contrary to the word of God, whether it's in the Old Testament or the New Testament. He's not going to tell you anything contrary to the word of God. He further quotes, and uh, he he's, uh, uh, found someone that summed up this two-way relationship between the believer and the Holy Spirit, as the believer cannot do it without the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will not do it without the believer. He's referring to uh, speaking in tongues that, you know, it's not hard. All you have to do is receive. Them. Amen. All you have to do is cooperate with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. If, 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 if God made doctors, hallelujah, and he did, you have to cooperate with the doctor. But your life is in your hand. Whether to obey him is your decision. And the Holy Spirit, our life, our spiritual life is in our hands. And whether to obey him, amen, is our decision. That's why we be up here at the altar crying. Because we disobey. I should have listened to the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, well, that's just learning. That's just growth. That's just expansion. That's just coming into maturity. When you get old, you'll say, Holy Ghost, come on. Holy Ghost, I need you right here. Come on, somebody. Amen. The Holy Ghost, when you're in the midst of a storm, he'll keep you still. Hallelujah. Amen. You'll feel his presence. You'll discern his. You have to learn how to discern him on the outside and the inside of you at all times. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Bible says in Acts 2 and 4, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. They began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Amen. Now, I'm going to do a sidebar because I need to help people. As a pastor, I need to help people. Amen. We were truly blessed doing Holy Convocation. It was as unique and powerful, and the Holy Spirit, I don't know about you, exceeded our expectation amen we prayed for him to show out we prayed for his presence and he did not disappoint us amen so this only one thing is the vow the vow i want you cognizant when you vow when you pledge. Now we know that the tithe belongs to God. The offering belongs to God. But the vow and the pledge is your decision. It Come on somebody. Amen. So to vow in its earliest meaning it means that it's a binding obligation. It is a prayer to God. It's a pledge, it's an oath of religious character. It's the, the demonstration of the integrity of your character. Oh, this is good. That's why you, you oh, I, I'm offended. Oh, okay. Don't go too quick, Shereen. Calm down. Amen. And it's a transaction initiated by man between man and God. And man in the vow is literally dedicating himself 
or his service or something valuable to God. I'm not, I'm, I'm doing this because the Holy Spirit told me that he wanted to remind you of your vow. Come on. Amen. And that he had given you a whole season to save. He gave us a plan. I, I, I don't know. I, I didn't do it just out of myself. I, I heard the Holy Ghost say, do a plan. Because I want my people not to be um, uh, uh, inundated or overburdened trying to give offerings. This was good. And am I helping? Vows are imposed self discipline for achievement of character and self dedication for the attainment of certain goals. Amen. You, you, there's a reason why you said yes. It had to be the Holy Ghost. That prompted you. Amen. Now, when we look at the first kinds of vows, it's often called bargains. Some people vow, they make a bargain. Amen. They, they were made on conditions of favors to be returned by God. Jacob at Bethel vowed to make Bethel a shrine and to give a tithe to God if God would supply his needs and give him protection. Amen. Jephthah, whose vow is often called or spoken of as a foolish vow, or done without thought but out of desperation. He vowed as a sacrifice to God, whatever should first meet him when I get back home. If God you would grant me victory over the Ammonites. Amen. And, his, in his, and who is in grief because his only child is the one who comes to meet him. Amen. Hannah goes to the temple and she vows, God, if you would grant me a son, I will consecrate him to you to your service. Amen. And Samuel lives his days in the temple. Uh, and he's a Nazarite. Amen. The Psalms mention vows of thanksgiving and sacrifices that are paid to God for answered prayers and deliverances that he has granted them. Amen. There are, are places in the Bible where sums of money came from volative uh, consecrations, which were divided in two parts, sacred for the altar and to repair the temple. Vows are always and were always voluntary. But the scripture, this is what the scripture did, put regulation on what you do once you say a vow. Amen. Uh, and so uh, if you make them, then God binds you to your word. Amen. Your word should be your bond. Your word is your guarantee. God takes you at your word. Because you have guaranteed him something. Amen. Our problem is we think we make vows to man. That's where we get mixed up. And then we think, well, if I don't keep it, what they going to do? I'm not going to do nothing. Because you didn't make the vow to me. Uh, uh, is anybody with me right here? Amen. So let's look at Ecclesiastes 5. <laughs> Say, this is good. Amen. Because uh, you got the Holy Ghost. And I have to believe you got sense enough to hear the Holy Ghost 
come on, when he prompts you that he wants you to give. Because that's who told you. Amen. You, you ever did something, you said, you know what, I really wasn't intending to do that, but the Holy Ghost made me do that. Come on, amen. And you were obedient. Come on, why? Because you love God. And you want to be obedient to God. Is this good? Say, this is good. The Bible says, in all you're getting, get understanding. We're going to get understanding in this network. So that, you know, I don't care what profit, you, you can't pay for a word to come to pass. Amen. So you got to decide, is it God drawing you here with your pocketbook, or is it you wanting a word because you ain't praying for yourself? Because you can come and say, I'll bring it back. I'm going to bring it back. I, I'm going to give it. I'm, I'm going to give it next week. I'm going to do it next month. I say, okay. I throw your envelope in the garbage. And, and uh, if you do it, you do it. I'm not the one that binds you to a vow. Apostle Turner, Sister Turner, the elders, we are not the ones who bind you to be obligated to vow. Your obligation is your tithe and your offering. You voluntarily give pledges, vows, because you want to aid in the work of God. You have a heart for the kingdom. You belong to the kingdom. Amen. And you know that God is going to take care of you. Amen. Because he has prompted you to give into the kingdom. Amen. He said, give and it shall be given. Press down, shaking together, shall men give unto your bosom. You're going to get some favor. Come on, over and above. Woo! Because why? Because it's an over and above offering. Woo! God, it's a consecrated offering. It's a sanctified offering. Who sanctified it? You with your words. You sanctified it. You sanctified the moment. Amen. So, so the ecclesiastic writer says, I got a few more minutes. I know y'all getting antsy. Keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God and be more ready to hear than to give sacrifice, the sacrifice of fools. For they consider not that they, they, <laughs> they do evil. Amen. Be not rash with thy mouth. And let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon the earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. For a dream cometh through the multitude of business, and a fool's voice is known by the multitude of words. When thou vowest a vow unto God, Defer not to pay it, for he have no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better it is that thou should not vow. Because see, the church depending on you keeping your word. And when you don't keep your word, come on, somebody, you got 175 vows, and you only get 30 of them across the network, somebody is in trouble. I would do whatever I needed to do to fulfill what came out of my mouth.
suffer thy mouth Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh. So in other words, somebody made a vow in, out of their flesh. Suffer not, suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error. Wherefore should God be angry at thy voice and destroy the works of thy hands? I'm just telling you what this Bible says. I know we in grace, but God judges over there in grace. For in the multitude of dreams and many words, there are also divers vanities. But fear thou God. Amen. Proverbs 20 and 5 said, Counsel in the heart of man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. Am I saying God is going to kill you? No, I'm not saying he's going to kill you. But, honey, he'll let you struggle. Oh, yeah, baby, I've been there. Honey, I've been there. Oh, yeah, it, it, it could get hard. Have it ever gotten hard? We in a hard season. I, this is no time to be playing church. It's no time to be playing with the things of God. And money is sacred. Because he said money answereth all things. Hallelujah. And we know about Ananias and Sapphira. This is in the New Testament. Acts 5, 1 through 11. But I'm just going to look at verse 3 because we're talking about the Holy Spirit. Amen. They sold their land. They kept back part of the price of which they were in agreement. They were in agreement. Amen. We don't believe that God's people know you lying. But Peter said, Ananias, why have Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land. Check this out, verse 4. Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? It was your money. You didn't have to vow. Nobody had a gun back there. Boys, y'all get them. Bring them up here. Bring them up here. Amen. <laughs> I get all the Holy Ghost gangsters in the back. Just bring them all to the front and they're going to bow today. He said, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied to men but to God. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. We're talking about the Holy Spirit. And how are we going to move forward and go on if we don't stop and get some truth? If I'm asking the Holy Spirit to teach me, teach me the way of God. You trying to be spiritual and you got lies in your heart. The checks made payable to CETM. <laughs> the ministry was depending upon your integrity and the integrity of your words. That you made a vow, those pledges, not unto man, but in your heart and spirit knew God wanted you to give. Amen. I'm not trying to persuade you. I'm obeying the Holy Spirit. We must ask God 
for wisdom. We must repent and say, God, you got to show me how to get this out of my hand. Quickly. Amen. How are you going to be promoted in the things of God? when he can't trust you with your own money. How you gonna do that? When we had people who on disability saving and brought in a thousand dollars saying, Pastor, we just about there. We had people lost their job but say, you know what, I'm not touching God's money. And God moved. Because faith moves him. Trust moves him. Belief moves him. We want the anointing, we want to shout, we want to dance, and we don't want to be obedient in some things. It's the Holy Ghost. He on his job. Amen. Don't say it's the devil. Look at your track record. How many vows haven't you kept? How many pledges haven't you kept? Because if you don't have faith, you shouldn't walk. I'm just warning you. Because we don't do that. We don't do that. We got to get it right. I put myself on a payment plan. Some God forgive me. I, I, I promise I'm going to get this to you quickly. Because to much is given, much is required. you given much word here. you getting truth here. Come on. So I'm telling you the truth. That the Holy Spirit said, I don't like it. I love convocation, but I don't like how they did the vows. The Bible said, grieve not the Holy Spirit. Disobedience grieves him. Lies grieve him. Amen. It's quiet in this sanctified church. Amen. We don't vow just because a prophet come in town. Or an or, or anointed vessel come in town. We vow because God has convinced us this is our house. That we need to take care of our house. That we need to help to bring prophets and get the confirmation that we get and the ministry that we get. It don't have to be like that. See, some folk just take your money and don't give you nothing. But you like them kind. But truth, we shine truth. We turn truth on. Amen. So I'm advising tonight you need to do something to say I am going to Take care of this. I got your name. I know who pledged. I watch, the Bible said Jesus was watching them in Mark, I believe 12, Luke 12. And uh, he was watching them bringing the offering, and the, the rich people were giving, like, you know, this ain't nothing, you know. And uh, then the little, little lady, the little widow woman came. And gave him everything that she, he said, she has done more. Now, Jesus was looking in the offering bucket. 
watching, watching the heart, watching the attitude. So we have to make up a decision. Do we take care of where God has placed us? Do we lie, cheat, steal? Joshua couldn't do nothing at AI because of a thief. We got to get the thieves to be converted. Will a man rob God? Yeah. You have robbed me. You say, wherein have we robbed you? In tithes and offering. Why have we allowed Satan to fill our hearts? Amen. God loves us. He wants to promote us. He wants us to go far. He wants to help us. Amen. I cannot continue watching these dead vows and pledges because there are flies in the ointment. The Holy Ghost is a choice. Obedience is a choice. Come on, give God a praise. That's weak. That's weak. That's weak. That's weak. That's really weak. <laughs> my, my, my. God is so good. He's, he's so real. Hallelujah. He's so rich. Hallelujah. I love him. Come on. I love the Holy Ghost. I love how he works. I love how he talks. At night, at noon, in the car, walking, on the treadmill. <laughs> he talks. Amen. I, I, I had enough nerve to do a spinning class and I was like, okay, God. I said, hold the ghost now. You know, the guy was like, y'all knew was y'all, y'all gotta stay on that bike now. Me and the girls. I said, hold the ghost, please. I gotta stay on the bike. <laughs> After a while, I got rhythm. I was standing up too. <laughs> he will strengthen you in everything. Whatever you don't know how to do, he'll teach you. Hallelujah. You can get a promotion, not even know the job, and the Holy Spirit will teach you the job in a day overnight. And you'll go to work the next day telling them what to do and where they making mistakes. Y'all, 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 I know the Holy Ghost. He works. He works. He wants you to put him to work. He want to show you he's real. He want to show you he's here to be the demonstration of the realness of God. Yeah. Father, we love you and we thank you now. You said it's your pleasure to give us the kingdom. Lord, we just, just love you. The anointing, the glory. You're so real. So, Father God, I stand in the gap for the sons and daughters of this network. That for one reason or another, failed to bring their vows failed to follow the plan, failed to have the discipline. We repent and thank you for another opportunity. We know that we are bound by our word. So Lord God, I pray for honor 
of all the words that they've spoken. Honor and integrity. Preserve their soul. In the name of Jesus. God, we thank you that you told us not to lean to our own understanding. But you said in all our ways acknowledge you and you will direct our path. You've delivered over and over. You've proven yourself over and over again. You've proven your faithfulness. So God, we thank you that you've given us an opportunity to prove our faithfulness. We ask you now, Lord God, not to tie up their hands. In the name of Jesus, I ask for you to have mercy in the name of Jesus and we give you glory now for even the heart that's willing put a plan in their mind and we'll forever be grateful God we thank you now because it shall already be done we thank you now in the name of Jesus that your perfect will is done in the earth as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name. Come on and give God a praise.